In 2022, we celebrate 130 years of HBCU football. On December 27th, 1892, Livingstone and Biddle College, now known as Johnson C. Smith University, played in Salisbury, North Carolina, with Biddle winning 5-0. Over time, HBCU football has evolved. HBCU football's popularity continues to rise. Millions attend games each year and millions more watch on television. The HBCU bands provide some of the top entertainment in the country. Over that time, some of the best players to ever play in the National Football League played at HBCUs. Every Monday through Friday on the HBCU Football Daily Podcast, national radio and television host Donald Ware takes a look at what's happening in HBCU football and talks with coaches, players, administrators, and media about the 2022 season. Make sure you join the conversation on social media by using the hashtag HBCU130. Now, here's your host, Donald Ware. You've got it locked to the HBCU Football Daily Podcast for today, Monday, September 19th. I'm Donald Ware. It's Manic Monday on the podcast and for a, a really, really good reason. I mean, we had some good football games. I, I had a prediction where I was off and way off, way wrong which we'll talk about and talk about more uh, on Takeaway Tuesday. But some good wins and some teams still remain undefeated even after week three. Things kicked off on Thursday as Benedict, one of those teams remaining undefeated, defeated Savannah State 24 to nothing, talked about this on the weekend edition of Box to Row, which of course can be heard on radio stations across the country as well as on Friday's uh, at its new time, 6 p.m. Eastern, that's 3 Pacific, on ESPNU Radio, on Sirius XM, that's channel 84. And then Saturdays, 9 a.m. Eastern, that's 6 a.m. Pacific time, on Sirius XM, channel 142, HBCU. We talked a little bit about this and Benedict. I mean, that's a big win by Benedict. Trying to keep pace at the time with Fort Valley State. And I will tell you how Fort Valley State did this weekend as well. Uh, because Savannah State was picked to finish second in the C- the SIAC's Eastern Division behind Albany State. We'll tell you how Albany State did uh, as well. So you've got some good football being played in Benedict, one of those teams that remain undefeated. Another team remaining undefeated, Jackson State, absolutely blew Grambling State away 66-24. to I, I did say that I thought Grambling would win this game um, just be- based upon what I – you know, saw uh, the week before by both teams in respective games. Uh, but Jackson State just, again, as I've mentioned, Jackson State is on a mission. And, I mean, everybody that's in Jackson State's way to this point uh, has gone down. Uh, you know, Tennessee State kind of hung tough last week, but 66-24, to 24, it, was a t- it was a close game for a while, at least there in the first half. Grandma State was hanging right around, and then Jackson State just blew it wide open. Alabama State, winless on the season, falling to Austin P 28 to 3. It was Prairie View AM falling to Incarnate Word 31 to 14. Arkansas Pine Bluff could not hang with Oklahoma State falling 63 to 7. In a bit of a surprise, right? Like a bit of a surprise, although I think on the weekend edition of the program, I said, hey, You know, Texas Southern can put some points on the board. I wasn't sure about Texas Southern's defense. Texas Southern's defense came to play against Southern. And Southern, one of the favorites in the favorite uh, in the SWAC's Western Division. Texas Southern 24, Southern 0. That game was the Arlington football showdown played in Arlington, Texas. That's a big win. Had a chance to listen to my man Charles Edmond, the voice of of the Old Corn State Braves on Saturday as Old Corn State beat McNeese State 30 to 19. Uh, It it, it was, you know, a game where kind of McNeese State kind of hung around, but Old Corn State, I mean, Old Corn State's tough, you know, defensively, offensively, really down the stretch. The last couple of possessions for McNeese State, that Old Corn State defense really, really locked into that football game. And probably the biggest when by an HBCU this weekend, it was North Carolina Central over New Hampshire, 45 
to 27. So the Eagles remain undefeated, now 3-0 and on the season. And Maine came into, excuse me, New Hampshire came into that ball game um, uh, as the number 25 ranked team in the country. So that is a huge, huge win for North Carolina Central. Big time win for the Eagles. Morgan State getting its first victory of the season, 24 to 9. I felt like Morgan had been knocking on the door a little bit the previous two weeks, and I felt like that door could be busted open, and it was good defense by the Bears and a good running game steadied the Bears in that victory over Sacred Heart. The first victory of the season for Morgan State and the first for Damon Wilson as the head football coach at Morgan. Speaking of teams, Remaining undefeated, Hampton with a big win, uh, 17 to 7 over Norfolk State in the Battle of the Bay. That game was played on Norfolk State's campus in a, a, a situation for Hampton, who remains undefeated. Now, they had, I think, about 17,000 there, so that's not a bad crowd there at Dick Price Stadium in Norfolk. Up in New York, Howard all over Morehouse. 31 to nothing. So Howard gets its first victory of the season in four tries. North Carolina AT falling to Duke 49 to 20. The Aggies played much better in the second half. Now go into next week in that showdown against the defending HBCU champions, uh, South Carolina State. Uh, but 49 to 20 loss by AT to Duke. It was Delaware State over Virginia University of, of the University, uh, Virginia University of Lynchburg, 35 to 19. Tennessee State falling to Middle Tennessee State, 49 to 6. Mississippi Valley State, boy, dropping another football game. Now the Delta Devils winless on the season, falling to Division II Delta State, 28 to 17. Albany State got back in the win category again. Tough loss last week against Florida A&M. Albany State, the favorite in the SIAC overall, certainly the favorite in the Eastern Division, defeated Shorter 42 to 20. It was Johnson C. Smith, it was actually Shawan getting its first victory of the season, 32 to 29 over Johnson C. Smith, who remains winless on the season. Kentucky State lost to Dayton 46 to 3. Shaw with a big victory, first victory of the season for the Bears over Bowie State, 17 to 14. So Bowie State now drops to one and two on the season. And if you're Shaw, that's a big win. Um, I mean, it, you know, if you don't win that game, it's not the end of the world. But if you're Shaw, you don't want to fall to 0 3 on the season. And I mean, Shaw is, I, I think. You know, pick to well, it, it, Shaw is picked to finish second in the Southern Division, but you want to, you know, Fayetteville State. That's going to be a good showdown, I think, between Shaw and Fayetteville State once that game takes place. West Virginia State got back in the win category, 34 to 29 over Fairmont State. So now the Yellow Jackets one and one in the Mountain East Conference and two and one overall. It was Bluefield State going to two and one. Got a nice victory over Central State. 27 to 23 since that that Hall of Fame game in Canton uh, for Central State when it beat Winston-Salem State. The Marauders have, have now dropped its their last two ball games. Lane got its first victory of the season, 38 to 6 over Clark Atlanta. Tuskegee with a nice win. Reginald Ruffins first as the head football coach at Tuskegee, 13 to 10 over West Alabama. Fort Valley State remains uh, remains uh, undefeated on the season. A tough game, uh, defeating Allen 29-27. to Florida Memorial evened its record at 2-2, two and two, defeating Warner 49-22. to Langston also remaining undefeated on the season, defeated Wayland Baptist 56-24. to So Quentin Morgan doing a good job. He's always done a good job at, at – uh, of course, at uh, Langston, but now you got a situation. Langston, I think, was seven and three last year, so Langston looking to 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 get back to the top of that Sooner Athletic Conference. Lincoln of Missouri 
It uh, just continues to be a tough road for Lincoln of Missouri, falling to Fort Hayes State, 51 to 10. Miles falling to Valdosta State, 55 to 7. It was Texas College falling to Oklahoma Panhandle State, 53 to 6. Virginia State all over St. Augs, 42 to 7. Virginia Union following up the week, the win last week over Valdosta State with a blowout victory over Livingstone in Richmond, 42-6. to six. Fayetteville State in a tough battle. I think Lincoln of Pennsylvania is going to be improved, but Fayetteville State gets by Lincoln, 19-7. to seven. Elizabeth City State getting its first victory of the season, 20-17 to 17 over Winston-Salem State, as the Rams are winless on the season. So that's a look at the week three scoreboard. If you missed any of those scores, you can log on to our website at boxtorow.com and get that scoreboard. On tomorrow, it is Takeaway Tuesday, so I'm going to be talking about some of my thoughts on week three in terms of some of the things that I saw. We're certainly going to be talking about North Carolina Central and its big win. We're going to be talking about Jackson State 3-0 and on the season and its win against Grambling State. And we're still talking about, I mean, we're talking about Hampton. We're talking about still several teams that remain undefeated after three weeks of HBCU football. Don't forget to tell a couple of friends about the HBCU Football Daily Podcast, where you can find us on our website at boxtorow.com. Also, you can find us at iheartmedia.com or wherever you get your podcasts, and you can find us on the Box to Row YouTube page. Talk with you tomorrow. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the HBCU Football Daily Podcast. You can also listen to the podcast at BoxToRow.com, iHeartMedia, or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to get your HBCU football fix on Box to Row with Donald Ware each weekend on the radio station near you and on Sirius XM on HBCU Channel 142 and on ESPNU Radio on Sirius XM Channel 84. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at at Box to Row for the latest in HBCU football and don't forget to tell a friend.